Right, I'm just going to show you how to change a uh, side marker light and a turn signal light on a C5. Best thing to do that I found, I mean, you could go up through the air duct, but I got fat hands, so that was a no-go. Kind of scraped myself up doing that. So I was like, you know what, let me try this. I've never done this. I've done it the other way, so I don't know, maybe I've gained weight and become a little fat. Because I had a real hard time getting my hand in there. So the side marker light popped. So I pulled that out, and up underneath, let's see if I can get down in there. That's the side, the uh, turn signal light right there. So I just replaced both of those on both sides. So it's very easy to take off that top cover. It's just a couple of screws. So you will need the star key. For some of them, the ones that are star keys are the ones that hold the painted piece on. The screws, this is what holds that plastic bezel on. So I just found it easier to go through the top here. And after you get it off, so you will have to have the headlight up. I will show how to reassemble it so you'll get the idea. But after you get that those two pieces off, just put the headlight back down and you're able to reach in there freely. It's awesome. For the front turn signals, just went with some Sylvania's 4157NA. And just, uh, you can look for either of those there too. Got the new side marker light in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights on, make sure it works before I go ahead and reassemble the headlight assembly there. So, let's see how this goes. Upon turning on the lights, the headlight will flip up so you will not be able to reach your hand back down in there. But I can see in there, and it's a little hard, there it goes. That light is working. So I'm going, going ahead, shut the lights off so that this piece goes down. I'm going to reinstall that light back into the housing and go ahead and put the assembly back onto that flip up headlight. All right, to be able to put this back on, you have to do it two ways. You're going to have to have it in the down position. You're going to have to line it all up. So you're going to have these two tabs back here. So you're going to want to have that line up there while it's in the down position and after you get these bolts back in because you won't be able to put these bolts or tighten these bolts while the headlights are in the pop-up position so you got to remember the star key bolts are the ones that hold the upper piece into place and then the regular screws are the ones that hold the bezel in place so after you get these in Go ahead and re-pop up that headlight, and we can start on the other ones. Now that the headlight is up, what you want to remember is the star keys are the ones that will go in first because they will hold the top portion of that headlight cover. The one with the tabs here, those are the ones that the screws are going to go into for the bezel. So you got a couple on this side as well. So remember, this tab, regular screw here, that's what you're going to use for that star key to be able to sit this into place. And then we're gonna go ahead and stick that bezel in there afterwards. The side with the locking cap is one that goes on the inside towards the center of the hood. So you have to be real careful, not scratch anything while you put this bezel back in there. You see it's got this tab. That tab is going to slide up right in there. So that's how you'll know you get it lined up but you'll have to kind of finagle it in there and get this bottom piece in there to make sure you don't scratch your paint. So do this very carefully because you see how awkward it is. So you're gonna have to start with kind of feeding the top end first up under that portion and slowly feeding the lower part in, making sure you get the sides put in as well. And you'll see that all these screw holes will line up with each other. So just be very careful while you do it so you don't break nothing, scratch nothing, destroy anything. I got that one screw there. Got this whole bezel put up in there. Now, the one screw here. Thing is, there's a third third screw that goes back here. And with this screw here, you got a problem. You can't even fit a stubby screwdriver in there to screw that down. So that makes it a little tough. And here's what I did. All right. So I just took one of these little screwdriver bits with a socket. 
to be able to get in there and just tighten it down. Then I just use a small wrench, socket wrench, to just kind of finalize it. But you could probably just do it with hand tight. I mean, it's plastic, so you don't want to over torque it, crack the plastic. So that's good enough, actually. So it's all in place. Seven screws in total, four of them being star keys, three of them being those regular screwdriver screws, and that's that. So not too hard, not too bad. I've actually done it in the past where I've gone up in here, which I actually tried tonight. I was I accomplished one of them, but my hand was getting stuck a lot. It hurt. I can see this duct is still out of place from moving it around. So I'm just going to put that back up in there. And there we go. Uh, so that's the intake ducts. You can just move them down, but if your hands are too big, they're just going to get stuck and it's not worth it. Cars and coffee, and I'm waiting to get my coffee. Charlotte Cars and Coffee. What's the date today? The 27th. So we got a skyline right here. What is that, an R32? Y'all tell me, I don't know. I'm not really into imports. And it's a right hand driver. This place is crazy. There's a guy over there earlier who got stuck on the uh, speed bump. Actually, it's this guy right here. Looks like he got off. This guy in a Lexus was teeter tottering on the speed bump. It was kind of funny. Check out this 2.3 turbo. Doesn't have a V8 screaming bald eagles, but it's got some kind of patriotic theme going on with all the hydro dipping and Uncle Sam looking like a zombie. All right, Mustangs are known for hitting crowds, right? I think this is the best sticker I've ever seen. Crowd control. That's hilarious. I like the color on this thing. Mustang just turned out 1158. Not sure if I can zoom in on the dyno. Don't really want to walk into this garage here. And not working out too well. 1158 to the ground. That's crazy. So I'm out here in Mooresville. One of my friends invited me to this car show. But not really a car show. More of a dyno run they got going on here. So I am a Camaro amongst Mustangs. Got all kinds of Mustangs. Uh, there's a Shelby GT. 
are about to hit the dyno pretty quickly here. Get some videos of that, see what the numbers are. That uh, kind of looks like candy apple. Mustangs, as far as the eyes can see, so I feel a little out of place here, but eh, no one's giving me any crap about it. Was this a uh, 2000 Trans Am? Yeah, 2000 Trans Am. Uh, just, you know, uh, built LQ9 uh, bottom end, OS3 top end. Uh, it's got a 228, 232 cam in it. Damn. It's a big cam. It's a plate kit, basic setups. I think it chop chops, huh? Yeah, Monster Stage 3 clutch, uh, quick performance 9 inch. Uh, I want to say a 9 inch one here. Yeah. I uh, actually got it used with for about 1500 so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I still got the stock rear end. I'm afraid, you know, from a dead takeoff, yeah, yeah. it'll blow the rear end on it. Yeah. I love the paint color on this. Yeah, it's a uh, maple red metallic. Maple red metallic. T-top too, but he says his doesn't leak because he uh, conditions the seals. Very smart. You mind if I just... Yeah, you know it is. It's a little dirty in there. But it's got cool <laughs> levers on the front. So he's got a little over a hundred grand on this thing, but look at this. Look at that nitrous sink. Back seat delete. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's amazing. It's got a love that snarling hood. QA1 adjustable pullovers in the front. QA1 uh, probably won't be able to see them. Back. Back. Yeah, I went with uh, UMI and Coney shocks. UMI springs, Coney shocks. Yeah. Oh, you got the Stranos? Yeah, in the back. It seems out here I don't see too many fourth gen Trans Amps Camaros running around. There's a few of us around here. It's mostly like Dodges and Mustangs. Yeah. That's all I see, like Chargers, Challengers. So he's got that Ford 9 inch in there with some Trinos. Yeah, what is that? Spoon? You got Spoon? Uh, yeah, Spoon. Spoon. Yeah. It's a nice little setup underneath. I like those tips. This thing's sweet. getting some no crowds were hurt during the filming of this video me I've always had a soft spot for these GTOs I just love the aerodynamics of them how they look I would love to get one but prices on these things keep shooting up GTO 6 liter Oh, the interiors are pretty cool. Yeah, this one's a manual. They both came in automatics and manuals. Not sure if it has like a T56 or TR 6060 in it. But with the 6.0s, they always came with the dual exhausts. The 5.7s were a single dual tip. Silver is a pretty nice color. Always favored these, neither black, red, or blue. Alright, so when my car came out, it was dubbed the Catfish Camaro, but I'm sorry. This Mustang looks like a damn catfish. It's got a pretty cool hood on it, though. It's all carbon fiberish. It's got some little bubbles in there or something. I don't know, that could be a wrap. I think it's a wrap. Alright, so also close to that place I was at with all the Mustangs. 
This is the DEI office, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Always wanted to come here. I ended up driving past this place earlier to go to that Mustang place, but uh, <laughs> didn't realize what this was as I passed it. I, <laughs> I don't know if this place is even open anymore. I think it's pretty much shut down. Looks like there was like a Christmas tree or something on the inside, but who's to say? If this place was open, I would love to have a tour of it if it was to the way it used to be or once was as far as having Dale Earnhardt's cars on display and stuff like that. But I am hoping to go to the NASCAR Hall of Fame, which is in Charlotte, right where I currently reside. So I think that'll be cool. Just uh, NASCAR has never been the same since the passing of Dale. So I don't watch it anymore.